It is my honor to kick off today's celebration. A few notes before we begin. Please take a moment to turn off your cell phones. For those who parked in the garage, please take your ticket to get validated at the front desk of the Cowan Center on your way to the reception following today's ceremony. Please now stand and join me in welcoming the procession of students, marshals, and degree candidates of the class of 2023.
diverse population of students' backgrounds and experiences through their possession of flags, which includes the presentation of the American flag, Middlesex Community College flag, and the many flags representing the diversity of our students, faculty, and staff. Thank you to the Lowell High School ROTC flag carriers. dedicated the employees of the, of the college are to ensuring each student is successful. They have persevered in the face of unprecedented challenges to continue help, helping students remain on their path and reach their goals.
I am now pleased to welcome to the platform part the platform party who are joined by student speakers, honored guests, administration, Middlesex Community College Board of Trustees, the Middlesex Community College Foundation Board, today's commencement speaker and distinguished alum, Massachusetts State Auditor Diane DeZiglio, and President Phil Sisson. To start off this 51st commencement ceremony, it is my great honor to present to you the president of Middlesex Community College, Phil Sisson. Thank you, Dari, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. As we begin our celebration, I ask you to please stand. Oh, you're already standing. That's good. Uh, you're doing well so far. Please stand for the national anthem being sung today by music adjunct faculty member Jeanette Lee. We also ask that you remain standing as the flag bearers exit the auditorium after the national anthem. Thank you. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly we held at the twilight's 
its last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Please be seated. As president of Middlesex Community College, it's a privilege to welcome you to our commencement ceremony here today. I'd like to begin this morning by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today and where each of us live, learn, and thrive are the traditional, ancestral, and unceded homelands of indigenous and tribal nations. Middlesex Community College's campuses in both Bedford and Lowell, Massachusetts, and this beautiful space, the Lowell Memorial Auditorium, are on the original homelands of the Penacook, Pawtucket, Merrimack, Wabanaki Confederacy, Pentucket, Massachusetts, and other indigenous nations. We acknowledge the genocide and systems of oppression that have dispossessed indigenous people of their lands, and we honor and respect the diverse and beautiful peoples still connected to this land. Thank you. Today we celebrate the graduating class of 2023. You look terrific. That, that sounded really good. Let's try it again. The graduating class of 2023. And the achievement of their academic goals. 
After three years of virtual and adapted commencement celebrations, it's wonderful to have all of us back here in person to celebrate our graduates. To begin our ceremony this morning, I express my deep appreciation and admiration for the faculty, professional, and support staff of our college who have dedicated their lives to meeting the many challenges of public higher education and, like our students, managed to do so after emerging from a pandemic, pivoting swiftly and successfully to a new world of higher education. Many of the honored guests who will speak today are here to celebrate our students and their amazing achievements and bring words of advice and congratulations. Graduates, my personal wish to all of you is that you live, your lives be filled with every blessing and that you live with a spirit, sincerity, and reflection necessary for a full and happy life. And we ask you to work as strong, vocal advocates and supporters of public higher education so that generations of those who follow may have similar advantages to those that you have received. Best wishes to each and every one of you. It is an honor and privilege to serve as your president. Now allow me to introduce our platform party. We are truly the community's college, a college built upon numerous partnerships. The men and women who honor us today by joining me here on stage are truly our advocates and our friends. We, thank, we welcome the opportunity to thank them publicly for their support. To the members of the platform party, as I call your name, would you please stand and be recognized and please remain standing until all of the platform party has been recognized. Distinguished Alumni Award recipient, our State Auditor, Diana DiZoglio. <laughs> State Representatives, Ken Gordon, Vana Howard, and Rodney Elliott. <laughs> City of Lowell Mayor, Sakari Chow. The members of the Middlesex Community College Board of Trustees and the Middlesex Community College Foundation. Will the trustees and foundation members please rise to be recognized. Our two distinguished student speakers, Sohana Hassan and Christian North. Next, our provost, vice presidents, deans, administrators, chairs, and program coordinators, will you all please rise to be recognized. Thank you for all the contributions you have made to our college. You may be seated. Now it's my pleasure to introduce today's commencement speaker, Massachusetts State Auditor, Diane DiZoglio. Diana was sworn in for her first term in January and has committed to working to increase transparency and accountability in state government. Diana is a former state senator and state representative from Essex County, and for today's purposes, we are extremely proud to have her speaking before you as a proud alum of Middlesex Community College. Please join me in welcoming to the podium State Auditor Diana DiZoglio. Good morning, everyone. I said good morning, everyone. Yeah, that's the Middlesex that I know and love. It is a great morning. You are graduating. And I am so excited to be back here today to celebrate your amazing achievement and this huge, huge milestone in your lives. First, I want to thank President Phil Sisson and Dean Sherry McCormick and all distinguished faculty, trustees, and alumni for the generous opportunity to offer a few words today. Uh, this is a day to be loud and proud, my friends. You worked so, so hard. You did long nights, long mornings long afternoons, skipping fun nights out with your friends or family to work on essays or study for exams. Many here took classes while balancing part-time or full-time jobs. Some balancing caring for your kids or other loved ones. It's been a journey and you earned this recognition today. Now, you're most likely wondering who exactly is this woman up here speaking? 
Uh, I don't blame you. My name is Diana DiZoglio, as was just said, and as you just heard in the intro, I am the Massachusetts State Auditor, but let's be real, my friends. Uh, most people have no idea what the State Auditor is, and that's, that's totally all right. The good news is I am not the IRS. <laughs> I, I do not audit you. Uh, I do not look at things like your personal tax, tax returns. I actually instead was elected to audit and investigate the government for you. Yeah, yeah, we like that. <laughs> And that is to help ensure that your, your tax dollars and the tax dollars of your families uh, aren't being wasted or abused. Our office audits government programs to show people, you know, whether they're working or not. Uh, we audit programs in agencies like early education and care, for example, to help make sure children are protected. Uh, we can audit mental health and addiction treatment programs through state agencies to help struggling families and also report on things like our equity, diversity, and accessibility challenges in state government to get more clarity on what needs to be fixed. And as you can imagine, there's a lot there, right? Uh, as a proud Middlesex Community College graduate myself, it's always been really, really important to me to work toward ensuring that all families, no matter where we come from, what we look like, or what our bank balance is, have opportunities to succeed. And the work I'm doing now allows me to really hyper-focus on that mission. But look, when I graduated from Middlesex, I didn't know that my experience here would put me on the path to being the state's top government watchdog. Uh, before I made it to Middlesex, I was a struggling high school student and on the wrong track. I was born to a 17-year-old single mom on what I'm told was actually supposed to be her high school graduation day. But after having me, she had to find work without a diploma and became a nurse's aide. She supported the two of us while earning very little money, and thankfully, she had the opportunity to enroll at Northern Essex Community College, where she, like many here today, worked while taking classes to graduate, eventually becoming a licensed practical nurse. But that accomplishment didn't come easy for her, and she, she really struggled. And while times certainly weren't as difficult as they could have been, and we counted our blessings, they also weren't easy. Uh, I grew up with domestic violence in the home and was also sexually abused as a child. And, you know, my family, like many families here today, struggled with mental illness and with addiction challenges. I grew up housing insecure, where sometimes we had a place to stay, but sometimes we didn't know where we were going to sleep. And as a teenager, I did not make things any easier on my mother and on my family by skipping classes, partying instead of doing my homework, and uh, getting detentions. But thankfully, those early challenges did not dictate my future. Eventually, my path would lead me to taking courses right here at Middlesex Community College while simultaneously waitressing and cleaning people's houses to make ends meet. And once on that path, I recognized the importance of surrounding myself with positive influences to keep myself strong and focused and disciplined. Now, everyone here can think of at least one person who helped you somehow stay on the path to be able to graduate today. And for me, one of those people was a professor here at Middlesex, and her name was Ann Miller. Now, Professor Miller probably didn't know that by spending a few moments of her time with me on an as-need basis, she would help change the course of my life. She saw potential in me when I really didn't see it in myself, and she guided me toward applying for a scholarship that would enable me to become the first in my family to be able to go on to earn a bachelor's degree. And yeah, I worked really hard. I did. But without the investments of others like Professor Miller, I would not have had the opportunities that I did. And knowing that is what inspired me to give back to our community in whatever way I could. And since I couldn't do so financially, uh, I decided to get involved in community service. 
I worked at the United Teen Equality Center right here in Lowell. I served at Girls Inc. also here in Lowell, helping with their after school programs. But upon earning my bachelor's degree, I was offered a job working at the State House for a state representative who needed an assistant. And although, full disclosure, I had no idea at that time of my life what really politicians or elected officials like him even did, I needed a job, so I took it. And I learned about all of the really great things our government can do to help people, from helping make sure kids get access to a great education, regardless of where we live, to helping people access job training opportunities, to helping ensure families can access affordable health care. But within just a short time of working there, I also learned about the flip side of our government and how it can operate when there's no accountability. In what was my first job out of college, I was sexually harassed while working in our own Massachusetts State House. And the way that they thought it was appropriate to deal with that harassment, to make it stop, was to fire me. So the problem would just go away. But they didn't just fire me, they also required I sign a non-disclosure agreement, also known as a hush agreement, that was meant to stop me from talking about literally anything that I'd seen, witnessed, or experienced behind the closed doors of our state house amongst some of the most powerful politicians in Massachusetts. But I didn't let them get rid of me or keep me quiet, and I didn't leave state government like they told me to do. I instead decided to run for the position of state representative myself. And a little over a year later, a little over a year later, my friends got elected to serve as the youngest woman serving in the House of Representatives at that time. Thank you, my friends, because y'all just heard my story. <laughs> Obviously, this was not part of my five or 10 year plan, but there I was on this really surprising new path, elected to serve thousands of people in the communities that I grew up in. And I knew it was my responsibility to fight like hell for other working families in our communities who have also, maybe for different reasons, but who have also been dismissed or ignored or disenfranchised by a system in our state government that still isn't working for all families in Massachusetts the way that it could and the way that it should. And I fought for what I believed was right, worked hard, ignored the haters, and eventually became a state senator where I was the youngest woman serving in the Senate. And I'm now your state auditor currently serving as the youngest statewide constitutional officer. Now some of y'all are looking up here at me like, but you're old. <laughs> but I, I say this stuff about my age and about my personal journey, uh, both professional and personal, coming from a background with not a lot of money, being broke, being younger than the rest, uh, to tell you that if I can do it, I believe anyone here can do it. Anyone here. Anyone. Anyone here can achieve your personal goal. It's not too big for you. And it may take a little more time than you'd like, but believe me when I say, having sat in your seats before, you really can do anything you want with your life from here. And today is just the beginning of your personal success story. Each graduate here has had to overcome adversity. Your degree or certificate, it's not a gift. You had to earn it. You've battled your own personal demons, jumped over hurdles no one else knows about, and fought to get across the finish line to walk across the stage today. And some people maybe didn't think you could do it. Some may even have had some haters around you throwing dirt on your name. But you know what? When they tried to bury you, they didn't know you were a seed. 
and what didn't kill you actually did make you stronger. And from here, you're going to continue to grow stronger. I have five principles that I hope encourage you on your journey here today that have helped me. Number one, fail or fall forward. Fail or fall forward. This is a lesson I originally learned from the great leadership guru, a man named John Maxwell. Do what you know in your heart you're being called to do without being attached to the outcome. Let go of the fear of losing or the fear of falling on your face. And when you fall, because you will, just make sure that you're falling forward. And by getting up and looking to your next opportunity, Oprah says, there's no such thing as failure. Number two, forgive. People ask me all the time how I wake up and go to work at the place that fired me with powerful politicians who still want to get rid of me. And my honest response is forgiveness daily. <clears throat> Some people in your life, they might not deserve forgiveness, but you deserve peace. And bitterness is bondage. Unforgiveness is an invisible cage. But be sure to set boundaries because you're no one's doormat and you deserve respect. But to quote the great Martin Luther King Jr., as you press on for justice, be sure to move with dignity and discipline using only the weapon of love. Let no one pull you so low as to hate them. Rise above with love. And number three, feed your body, mind, and soul with good. We all know healthy food increases our physical abilities while junk food decreases them. Similarly, what we feed our mind and our soul impacts our mental health and our spiritual well-being. If we wouldn't go to a landfill to feed our physical body with other people's trash for lunch, we shouldn't feed our minds with some of the garbage we can find on social media or by listening to another person's gossip or trash talk, right? We are what we eat and we are what we think. So let's check our social interactions and the content we're allowing to, you know, we're allowing ourselves to absorb to make sure that it's bringing our spirits up and not down. And whatever your faith, take time to meditate or pray and journal. Successful people know that centering yourself in private prepares you to overcome challenges in public. Number four, be a survivor. Don't stay a victim. We can all think of times when we've been a victim of either someone else's bad behavior or a really bad life event. None of us, not one of us can control our circumstances enough to completely avoid hurt, loss, and heartbreak. But we all get to decide how we respond. Which brings me to point number five, choose your words wisely. Because we are who we say we are. So say things like, yes, that bad thing happened, and yes, I'm still standing here. Yeah, everything fell apart, but yes, I fought to piece it back together. Yes, I fell down, and yes, I'm going to pick myself back up again and keep moving. Yes, they said I wasn't good enough, but yes, I'm going to do what Bishop T.D. Jakes says, and when someone rejects me, I'm going to send them a sympathy card for their loss. Because guess what? I know and love who I am. I know what I bring to the table. I love who I'm becoming. I love what I've accomplished. I love what I will accomplish because I have what it takes. So better watch out because here I come, world. Graduates, look right up here. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I believe with all of my heart in you. All of my heart. You are strong, you've got grit, you're intelligent, determined, and resilient. You're courageous and capable, and you are the change makers 
our communities have been waiting for. You have a purpose and a calling on your life and can overcome every challenge just like you did to get here and graduate today. Receive it, believe it, and be blessed as you go out and shine bright in all of your future endeavors. Congratulations, Middlesex Community College, class of 2023. Diana, thanks for sharing your story with our graduates today. But first, uh, we acknowledge members of our alumni community for their accomplishments, and I'd like to have uh, Sherry McCormick, our Dean of Advancement, present to Diana a gift of our appreciation to the graduating class of 2023, your family and friends. I'm honored to recognize State Auditor Diana DiSaglio as this year's distinguished alumni. One more round of applause for Diana, please, if you would. <laughs> Middlesex Community College is fortunate to have an outstanding local board of trustees. Each member distinguishes him or herself by their dedication and commitment to our students, to our staff, and to our campuses. They have set high standards to ensure that Middlesex has been identified as a national and international leader in community college education. This morning, we welcome to the podium James Campbell, the chairman of MCC's Board of Trustees. James Campbell was a former city manager here in Lowell when the college first opened its doors of our city campus and has remained a stalwart supporter ever since. Please join me in welcoming trustee chairman James Campbell. Thank you very much, Phil, and uh, thank you, Diana, for that great speech. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate you, members of uh, faculty, administration, and the Board of Trustees that have worked so hard to make Middlesex Community College the number one community college, the flagship community college in the state of Massachusetts. So thank you for all the work all of you have done. Congratulations, graduates. I'm honored to be here with you this morning <clears throat> to join you and your family and friends in this great celebration. As chairman of your board of trustees, I bring you the board's congratulations and their best wishes. Our students are the backbone of our institution and at every turn make us proud. This morning there are two groups that I would particularly like to take a moment to recognize. First, I want to recognize the 32 men and women who have served in our armed forces. Could our veterans please stand for an applause? Thank you very much for your service. All of you have inspirational stories about how you've arrived here today, but there's one particular group that I want to spotlight this morning. On Tuesday evening, myself, several members of my fellow trustees attended a pinning, health, pinning for our allied health students. It was a terrific night focused on students who are pursuing a career in the health in healthcare. A group of you took an oath at that ceremony to serve as honor to serve honorably as nurses. What is historic and inspirational about this year's group of graduating nurses, nursing students, is that they're the same students who just two years ago covered themselves head to toe in protective gear and participated in the first wave of senior citizens 
first wave of testing for senior citizens in a makeshift testing center that was created on our Bedford campus. And then, weeks later, these same students stood on the front lines and provided some of the very first COVID-19 vaccination vaccines and administered to our neighbors and loved ones as part of the mass, mass, mass vaccination site. Truly, these students will indelibly be etched in the history book with their work. And today, they graduate and prepare for the next step of their career and help it with helping others. If our nursing graduates could please stand to be recognized. Thank you to these new nurses and to all of our graduates. You are part of a very special family here, the Middlesex community family. Our faculty, staff, and graduates are among the finest public higher education has to offer. To our graduates, our Alumni Association is staffing a table here today in the lobby. All of you are now members of that elite group, and we encourage you you, we encourage you to um, sign up to be part of this uh, magnificent group. We'd like you to let us know your next steps to your, path to, your uh, path to greatness. We will have a place for you here in the Middlesex community family. You deserve the honors bestowed upon you today. Congratulations, good luck and go out and save the world. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for your remarks and for all your support. Sakari Chow was first selected to the City Council in 2019. He is the first Cambodian American mayor in the United States. He also serves as chairman of the Lowell School Committee and has been a staunch supporter and friend to me and the college. Please join me in welcoming Mayor Sakari Chow. What a beautiful crowd uh, this is. Please give your, yourself a hand of applause for graduating in style. Good morning to everyone. And on behalf of the city manager, Tom Golden, and the Lowell City Council, as mayor of this fine city, I bring you our heartiest congratulations and warm wishes for your continued success as graduates of Middlesex Community College. <laughs> Middlesex Community College came to the city of Lowell in a small program operating in the Warner Lancet Mills in the 1980s. In the early 1990s, the college established a permanent and much more prominent presence here in downtown Lowell, across the street in what was intended to be a high-tech training facility. I can tell you with the utmost pride and confidence that the City of Lowell's partnerships with Middlesex Community College has absolutely been one of the most prosperous and rewarding ones for students who attend Lowell schools. For decades, Middlesex has fostered and encouraged an open pipeline for students to continue the education at affordable rates and through accessible routes. Hundreds of Middlesex faculty members, administrators, over nearly three decades have ensured that students who face a variety of challenges in some of their K through 12 experiences understood that a college degree was something accessible to them. 
Middlesex has helped tens of thousands of students from not just Lowell, but from throughout our neighboring communities realize a college degree was attainable. It may not always seem or come without a certain degree of struggle, but Middlesex has always been there to help pull a student through the hard times and come out the other side with a degree and education that helps better prepare them to be productive members of the workforce and our society. I can also tell you the Lowell City Council and I know Middlesex Community College is an institution that will always be there to help the city flow, supporting countless community initiatives and stepping up to the plate whenever we have asked for help in any shape or form. In closing, I join everyone here today celebrating your accomplishments and encourage you, the class of 2023, to continue striving to continue your education and be a lifelong learner. Once again, congratulations to all of you. Many section me college. Thank you, Mayor Chow. Middlesex is fortunate to have legislative representation at the Massachusetts State House from members of both the House and Senate who represent the communities surrounding both our campuses. Here today to bring greetings from the state legislature is Representative Ken Gordon of Bedford. Thank you, President Sisson. On behalf of Governor Maura Healy, as well as the Speaker of the House and the Senate President, as well as the members of the State House delegation who are here with us today, Representative Vanah Howard, who was your distinguished alumni speaker last year, and Representative Rodney Elliott. Hey, let's have a hot hand for Vanah Howard. and those whose schedules could not permit them to be here today, Rep. Mom and Senators Kennedy and Barrett. It's an honor to be here before you today. It's an honor to be here and share a little time and a little space with my colleague in state government, Auditor Diana DiZaglio. We were classmates together when we both started in the House, and it's wonderful to see how far you've gone. I'm honored to be given this chance to address the Middlesex Community College graduates of 2023. Congratulations to you and congratulations to your families. Congratulations to another great year of accomplishments, not only to the graduates, but to President Sisson, Trustee Chairman James Campbell, and the rest of the Middlesex Community College Board of Trustees, the staff, the faculty, to Vice President Patrick Cook. Thank you for the opportunity you give to our students and to the partnership you have forged with the town of Lowell and with the town of Bedford and the city of Lowell. Middlesex has long been held up as the flagship of Massachusetts Community College's system, and I can tell you the work this institution does on workforce development is critical to the continued success of the Commonwealth. Studies have shown that as many as 85% of the graduates of our public colleges and universities stay and work in the Commonwealth. Each of you, all of you, are evidence that investing in our public college students and our community college students is a good idea for all of us. Not only does it help you to a brighter future, it ensures the long-term long stability of so many industries that support this state. But today is about you. You've earned this day. You've worked hard for it. And while for many, this may be the end of your days at the Cowan Center or the Bedford campus. It is just the commencement of a great adventure for you all. For you all. So whether you're off to a four-year college, a business or trade, the military or another destination, cherish the journey. There's magic in it. Get on that road and to borrow a phrase from my favorite poet, you'll get up and you'll walk in the sun. Our Massachusetts cities and towns in the world are waiting for you. Congratulations and enjoy your celebration.
Thank you to Rep Gordon and to all our representatives here with us today. We also have a special guest. Joining us for the first time for our commencement ceremonies is the new chancellor of the University of Massachusetts Lowell, Julie Chen. Julie is a valued colleague and a dear friend. Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Chen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. That's great. I'm excited, as, as are you, I'm sure, and honored to be here with you today as you mark this great milestone. And I'm especially pleased, given the close partnership that we have between Middlesex Community College and my institution, UMass Lowell. And thank you, President Sisson. Thank you so much for your partnership and friendship. For many of you, this road that you've taken has been indirect. It's been, had some twists, and I'm sure more than a few obstacles. But you've made it, and it's a testament to your determination and to the family and friends that have supported you and to the Middlesex Community College faculty and staff who have worked so hard to ensure your success. Congratulations for all that you've accomplished. And now just a brief invitation. I hope you're soaking all of this in. And maybe the last thing on your mind is, do I want to do more classes and more labs? <laughs> but I would be remiss if I didn't encourage you to take that next step. The partnership between Middlesex Community College and UMass Lowell means that a path has already been prepared and smoothed for you to easily continue your studies. And many of your predecessors have followed that path. So perhaps not today, and maybe not even tomorrow, but I encourage you to think about furthering your education, seeking that next degree, and most importantly, continuing to stay ahead of what is a rapidly changing society. I invite you in particular to stay here in this great city, this great education city of Lowell. Some of you, I know, are already headed to UMass Lowell, and, and I love that, and I want to invite you to stop by and say hello when you get to campus. And regardless of wherever you go, know that your accomplishments have prepared you. They've prepared you for the next steps in whichever direction you choose to move. Congratulations, class of 2023. I wish you all the best in your journey. Thank you, Chancellor Chen. Middlesex is proud to have committed faculty willing to take on leadership responsibilities at the college. At this time, I would like to ask all the faculty that are with us here to please stand for another round of applause for everything they have contributed to our graduates. This morning, we welcome Social Sciences Chair, Professor Deb Bacher, Chair of the MCC Faculty and Staff Association. Deb's a deeply committed professor of history and government, has been improving students' lives since 2007. Please join me in welcoming Professor Deb Bacher. Good morning, President Sisson, Board of Trustees, distinguished guests. MCC faculty and staff, family and friends, and most importantly, graduates. Today is a day of celebration. Today is a day when you will hear everyone talk about all of the hard work, dedication, and determination that you have shown to earn your degrees. Today you will hear many people speak about your future, the potential you have, and the possibilities that await. All of this is true. What I would like to say on behalf of the faculty and staff here at the college is thank you. 
Thank you for coming to school, caring about your classes, and other academic and co-curricular activities. We all work at the college because of the students. You make us want to come to work. In fact, many faculty and staff stay here an incredibly long time because of you. Nothing is as gratifying as seeing our students succeed and grow. Now, don't, come, don't forget to come back and see us. We love to know your successes. Let us know where you earned that next degree, where you found employment. Just yesterday, I spoke with one of my former students who finished his classes here and graduated in 2019, went to UMass Lowell, finished his graduate degree, and will start teaching high school history in the fall. His excitement was contagious. Remember that you motivate us every day. Seeing your continued excellence and enthusiasm brings meaning to our lives. So to all of the graduates, I would like to say thank you for making our work fun. Thank you for making our work rewarding. Thank you for making us see the very best of the next generation. On behalf of the faculty and staff of Middlesex Community College, congratulations to the class of 2023. We are so very proud of you. And since we've recognized our faculty, I would please ask all of the professional staff and support staff that help our students here every day to succeed, if they would please stand for your recognition. Also this morning, we welcome math faculty professor Joanna DeMonico on behalf of the Massachusetts Community College Professional Association. Joanna joined MCC as a full-time faculty member in 2005. Please welcome Professor DeMonico. Good morning. Uh, thank you, President Sisson, trustees, distinguished guests, and everyone else in the building for having me here to speak today. I also bring greetings from the professional staff and faculty known as the Middlesex Community College Professional Association. As we've heard, faculty and professional staff are the backbone. We're on the front lines providing you the services and support that you need to move forward to this day. Congratulations. Graduation, it's exciting. Class of 2023, it's not only been the faculty, staff, members of the Middlesex community, but your own community. Family, friends, others who are there to support you. Those up top, hello. Thank you for your support today. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. So, as soon as you get your degree, you belong to a special group. You're part of the Middlesex Community College alumni. Yeah, it's special. <laughs> so I'd like to give you a definition about belonging. Belonging is a sense of fitting in or feeling like you're an important member of a group. That's one of about 100 definitions that I found. Belonging is really an important part of any endeavor. Knowing that you belong in a class, in a club, on a team, at a school, I think that makes the experience whole. Developing relationships with those around you helps you to see yourself in many different ways. I have felt a sense of belonging at Middlesex for 23 years, and I know others have been here even longer. But belonging is more than just being a part of a group, but feeling the need to contribute to the general well-being of that group. Remember, we need your support here at Middlesex after you graduate. I know, this is the next pitch, right? Uh, how can you help Middlesex? So how can you support this group that you now belong to? Please join the Middlesex Alumni Association. They have great events, and they sponsor a lot of the scholarships that many of you all here today have received. Become engaged citizens, speaking up for better funding for community colleges at the state level. Yeah, y'all hear me, yeah. So, um, 
please talk to others about the need. We really want to truly make public education in Massachusetts accessible to everyone. Encourage others to belong to Middlesex. It's a great place to be. So on that note, as a math professor, let me say these final words as you go into the world after Middlesex. Differentiate between those who really care about you and not just themselves. Integrate yourself into the communities where you work and live to make a difference. Multiply all the good deeds from which you have derived benefits and distribute those good deeds to others. It is integral to success and really adds up. Good luck, class of 2023. Is the class of 2023 still here? I don't hear you. Okay. Just checking in. We are very proud this year to honor two of our graduating students as today's student commencement speakers, Sahana Hassan and Christian North. So Anna will tell you her story, but she started at MCC as a dual enrollment student taking college courses alongside her high school classes. She was familiar with MCC's early college as both her mother and brother are alumni of the college. She is an English literature student from Waltham. She's a Commonwealth Honors Scholar and a member of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Sahana Hassan. <laughs> I think I need that box. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank President Sisson, Provost Rodriguez, faculty, staff, honored guests, graduates, and their families. To begin, I'd like to take a brief walk down memory lane. If everyone here could humor me for just a second, I'll ask you all to close your eyes. I know it's odd, but stick with me on this. Now imagine this. It is September 2019. COVID-19 has not yet infiltrated our lives, so classes are still in person. On the fourth floor of the Cowan Center, I stumble into a crowded classroom. The weight of my backpack makes me slouch just a little. I'm not even five feet tall. I'm 13 years old. I'm a dual enrolled student taking MCC classes while in, while in high school. But most importantly, I'm scared out of my wits. A child in a room full of adults, I'm convinced I won't fit in here. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I won't fit in. But most challenges were made to be overcome, so I keep going anyway. Now, I invite everyone to open their eyes. In that crowded classroom, I eventually found an open seat and I slid in. Though I'm terrified in that moment, I won't be for long. Eventually, I'll make friends in that class and burst out of my bubble of fear. Eventually, when I tell them my age, they're impressed not annoyed or horrified, like I expected. Eventually, I'll make connections with a group of students seemingly unlike me in every way. Eventually, I won't just survive, I'll thrive. Though I might prefer to keep all the credit for this success, I would not have made it to commencement day without the support of my peers and my mentors. As a dual enrolled student, I took college courses alongside my high school classes for four years. During this time, I was often in classes with students who were decades older than me. This challenge only became more pronounced during the COVID-19 pandemic, when isolation in Zoom classes made learning a difficult and complicated task for us all. 
Despite these challenges, I found a special community at MCC, which helped me excel academically. Despite the pandemic, I kept my grades steady, and even though we couldn't meet in person, I joined various clubs and organizations. The semester we went completely virtual, fall 2020, was the semester I started working for the Academic Centers for Enrichment here at MCC. Here, I found a community that was willing to amplify my voice. Not create it, because it was always there, and not change it, because it didn't need changing. Instead, in the halls of the Bedford and Lowell campuses, I found a fascinating variation of home. Here, there were a group of people that could both disagree with me and respect me. Here were people that could somehow make me reevaluate how I saw myself and the world around me. Even when the pandemic forced us all online, the MCC community stuck together, meeting for classes via Zoom and refusing to let the darkness take away our light. In the dimmest of times, we lit a candle. And for the most part, and for the most part, none of us would have made it to commencement day without each other. We've all had a friend, a mentor, or a professor who made us feel a little bit better on a bad day. And together, we've created a community that shares its struggles and lends each other love, resilience, and belonging. And though we've had an amazing time here, today officially marks its end. After graduating, we'll scatter in different directions and find new adventures. So to my fellow graduates, I offer this advice. Life can be brutal. It's scary, frustrating, and can feel impossible. But finding that niche that you fit perfectly into can mean the difference between surviving and thriving wherever you go. So I ask of you, Find the community that speaks to you and let them in. If you'll allow it, the right people will be the catalyst for cultivating your success. That's what MCC has done for me. Congratulations to the class of 2023. I don't know, maybe we should have left that box here. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story with us, Hannah. Originally from Chile, Christian North now resides in Arlington. A mechanical engineering student, he is the founder of MCC's Model Aviation Club. During his time at MCC, he was a Lewis Stokes minority participant and a member of the STEM Starter Academy. Please join me in welcoming Christian North. First, I want to thank President Thiessen and Provost Rodriguez and MCC for giving me this honor. I want to thank the engineering, mathematics, and science department and all faculty and staff. I will not be here without their support and their patience with me. I want to thank my sister for flying all the way here from Chile and sharing her birthday today. Aww. Happy birthday. And I want to especially thank my wife for her encouragement, for keeping me grounded, and for her unconditional support. Today I want to talk to you about three things. Listen to your childhood dreams, create your own opportunities, pay it forward, and be mindful of time. The mystery of life isn't a problem to be solved but a reality to experience, Frank Herbert. First, listen to your childhood dreams. I was born and raised in Chile, a long and skinny country on the Pacific coast of South America. On April 12, 1981, 
One week after my seventh birthday, I watched live on TV the launch of the Space Shuttle Columbia, the first to go into space. And I decided that I want to be a pilot, an astronaut, and work for NASA. But kids do not know about requirements, visas, or citizenship. At 17 years old, I applied to the Chilean Air Force. I went through rigorous testing only to find out that I did not pass the final visual test. My application was denied for medical reasons, which crashed my dream into pieces. Getting a private pilot license in Chile in 1991 was financially unreachable for my family, so my dream of flying went dormant. I felt lost with no direction and no real desire to do anything else. I thought about it every once in a while, but it was too painful. Over the years, I bounced around a lot without a clear professional direction, except for one thing. I knew I wanted to be an engineer. I lived in different countries, experienced different cultures, learned different languages. I tried different things, but there was always still something in the back of my mind thinking about the sky. When I started at Middlesex Community College during my intro to engineering class, Professor Michelle Stein learned about my dream. She encouraged me to go back to those memories and rekindle the flame. The difference was that she showed me that there was a clear path that I could follow. And after graduation, I could transfer to an aerospace engineering program. This changed forever the way I saw my new journey as a student at MCC. By the way, after 41 years dreaming about it, last summer, I piloted an airplane from one hour from takeoff in Portland, Maine to landing in Beverly, Massachusetts. <laughs> Listen to your childhood dream. They're not rational. They're tied to emotions. They will give you the energy and the stamina to keep moving forward when the road gets hard. Find little things, mementos, that will remind you every day of your dream. That will keep you connected to that emotion in difficult times. Keep your dream closer and learn to improvise, adapt, and overcome. But overall, persevere. Those skills will serve you well in life. The second piece of advice I have is create your own opportunities and pay it forward. Quickly I noticed that I was not the only one at MCC interested in aerospace engineering, but most of them kept it quiet. I thought it would be a good idea to do a workshop for the STEM club about drones, and then I decided to create my own club. The Model Aviation Club was born officially in January 2020 a place to gather for those interested in aerospace engineers, learn about aeronautics, build scale aircraft, and fly them together. Then the pandemic happened, and I had to move everything online. Little did I know that the club will bring the attention of MIT Lincoln Labs and the New England section of the AIAA, and it will become the basis for a complete high school outreach course teaching aviation, airspace, STEM education to low-income and underserved communities. When you do things from your heart and pay it forward, opportunities will come your way. So don't be passive. And if you don't see opportunities, go out and make your own. And my last piece of advice to you is be mindful of time. When, my, when we moved to the U.S. in 2017, my wife and I discussed the idea of me going back to school. My wife said to me, whether you do it or not, time is going to pass anyway, so you better do it now. We had a non-extendable working visa for five years and no guarantee that we would get a green card. So I want to make the most out of our time here. And whatever happens, I could still return to Chile with an associate degree. Do not use your age as an excuse. You are never too young or too old to do things, to learn things. And if you think you are you, 
are the only one limiting yourself. We got our green card shortly before our visa will expire. For those of you who transfer, value what we had here, a personalized education, professionals that care and know your name, and many times go out of their way to guide you and to listen to you. If you find yourself feeling lost, look around the room and find those familiar faces from MCC and create a community and help each other. For, the use, for those of you that go directly into the job market, my advice is to find a company that will give you tuition reimbursement and that will be flexible enough for you to continue your education part-time to get your bachelor's degree. Finally, I want to leave you with a quote from Dan Milsman's book. The time is now, the place is here. Stay in the present. You can do nothing to change the past and the future will never come exactly as you plan and hope for. So, class of 2023, go out and experience your life because you have only one. Congratulations, graduate. We made it. Please, one more round of applause for both of our outstanding student speakers. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Arlene Rodriguez, Provost and Vice President of Academic and Student Affairs, who will present the awarding of diplomas. Please join me in welcoming Provost Arlene Rodriguez. Good morning, everyone. To the class of 2023, on days like this, I can't help but share advice from my favorite poet, Pablo Neruda of Chile. Si no escalas montañas, jamás podrás disfrutar del pasaje. ¿Verdad? If you don't climb the mountain, you will never be able to see the view. And class of 2023, you have climbed some very steep mountains here at Middlesex. Take time today to enjoy that view because you have earned it. And I have to tell you that as important as today is to you, it is equally important for our dedicated faculty and staff. Middlesex Community College's faculty and staff are here to celebrate your achievements. But let us not forget the crucial role that they played in shaping the person you have become today. The Middlesex faculty and staff have aspired to make you not just successful professionals, but also compassionate human beings. And really, it's been an honor to be a part of your educational journey. On this special day, we pause to honor Adogwu Ganobi, an engaged, respected, and loved Middlesex student who lost his life late last year. I ask that the family of Adogwu Ganobi, the middle, uh, Middlesex Criminal Justice Faculty uh, uh, and Chair Eloisa de Cunha and Dean Judith Hogan join me on stage. On November 15, 2022, Odogwu was senselessly killed. As word of his death passed through our college community, the grief was palpable. Students, faculty, and staff gathered across our campuses to express their sadness and anger. 
Shortly after, students organized a special memorial service attended and supported by Odogu's parents and family members. And on that evening, we heard stories about his love for his family, his journey from Nigeria, his loyalty as a friend, his drive to engage in all the opportunities and activities that Middlesex offered, and his goal to become a Lowell police officer. His faculty described him as kind-hearted and accepting of everyone. He took his work seriously, they said. We also learned that evening that his name translates to king or leader. And it was clear to us that in his short 26 years, he more than lived up to his name. To Odogwu's family, we know that nothing will ever replace Odogwu. But please know that we are honored that Odogwu Genobi will always be a part of Middlesex Community College's story. Please accept this honorary degree, a distinction to the college, a distinction from the college that reserves only for special occasions and for individuals who lived in service and love for humanity. And now we move to the core of our program, when you, the class of 2023, receive your degrees. <laughs> now we have a few instructions just to keep in mind, but we'll remind you. Please follow those who are directing you to line up and come to the stage. Once at the top step, you hand your card over to Dean Scott O'Neill. Round of applause. He's my partner here today. Once you cross the stage, you can choose to shake hands with the president and receive your degree. Okay. So we're ready. We got the instructions. Our first two graduates today are our student speakers. So we start with Sohana Hassan, Literature Award, Commonwealth Honor Scholar, member of Phi Theta Kappa, dual enrollment, MCC employee, and highest honors. Christian Andre North Quevedo, member of Phi Theta Kappa, Honors. We will now award our class marshals who will receive their degrees. Meg Fussell, Biotech Biotechnology. Nope, okay. Kim. Kim. Okay. We'll start with Meg. <laughs> Here we go. Meg Fussell, Biotechnology Award for Outstanding Student, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee. Thank you. Bianca Marie De Simone, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee. Madeline P. Reveal, Nursing Award for Academic Excellence, Commonwealth Honor Scholar, MCC employee. <laughs> Mamadou Koita, Dorothy O'Connell Unsung Hero Award, MCC employee. <laughs> Con 
Connor H. Trahey, UMass Boston Foster Furcolo Scholarship, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Patricia Romano Vargas, MCC employee, highest honors. I invite Dean Karen Townsend. Okay, one second. <laughs> I'm getting signs for one second. Sorry about that. Kim Chiang Che, Trio Program. <laughs> Sandra De Alcara Sepulveda, PTK, Highest Honors, MCC Employee. I now invite Karen Townsend to join me at the podium so that we can award the degrees for our students in the health programs. Associate in Science Dental Assisting, Francisca M. Baker. Lisa M. Macedo. Glendy A. Rodas. Associate in Science Dental Hygiene, Tanya M. Bagnera. Gabrielle Bernadette Bello, High Honors. Lindsay N. Cruciani, Highest Honors. Camilla G. DeFaria. De Laura D. Figueroa. Lynn H. Flanagan, Dental Hygiene Outstanding Student Award, MCC Employee, Highest Honors. Olivia G. LaBelle, Honors. Meg Catherine McGuire, Honors. Marco Mejia. Samantha Grace Morrison, High Honors. V. Nguyen, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Nicole Schuyler Oliveria, highest honors. Trang Phan. <laughs> Ali E. Ruan, honors. <laughs> Kelsey Rose Shane, highest honors. Marze Sharifi, Dental Hygiene Award for Academic Excellence, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. May R. Soar, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Ruma Wakas, honors. Associate in Science, Dental Laboratory Technology, Jordan J. Abuyakbek. Rumaira R. Balborda. Alec J. Fabry. Megan Lee Foley. Joseph A. Lamanta. <laughs> Srijana Rai. Associate in Science Diagnostic Medical Sonography, 
Jada D. Olu. April L. Duffy. Gabrielle M. Gedman. Vanessa Bertie McIntyre, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Alexandria Lauren Musession, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Kaylee S. Shepard, Diagnostic Medical Sonography Award, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Megan F. Skinner, honors. Soror Zare, honors. Associate in Science, Healthcare Administration, Glenda L. Bones. Maristella Christina Bottega, high honors. Jacqueline Lopez. Hermes J. Castillo. Patricia M. Malo. Teresa M. Montero. Danielle Grace Puccia. Yeah. Jennifer A. Saya Costa, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Associate in Science, Liberal Studies, Health Science Career, Talia B. Conroy. <laughs> Nadine E. Mpola. Iwinosa Jessica Oguseri. Sabrina Tidai. <laughs> Associate in Science, Medical Laboratory Technician, Casey Lynn Florence. <laughs> Associate in Science, Nursing, Michael A. Adcock. High honors. <laughs> Elizabeth Bayless. High honors. Emma L. Beers. Emily Anne Marie Brobst. Katie A. Burns. Yin B. Bustamante. Honors. Ashley M. Cardio, member of Phi Theta Kappa, honors. Amy K. Carroll. Amy. <laughs> Kayla I. Cintron, high honors. Gwendolyn Cook, honors. Meredith O'Brien Cormier. <laughs> Kelly J. Davidson. <laughs> Stephanie L. Davis. <laughs> Michelle Lynn Griffin. Harrington, Christina Hyde Holloway, Dorla Penta Nursing Award for Clinical Excellence, Bailey Lynn Lonis, Olivia S. McCarthy, Karen G. 
Chidera Onua, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Sonche Pa Connie King. <laughs> Stephen James Resta, High Honors. <laughs> Crystal L. Sorby. <laughs> Jessica Reyes Dane Terrace, Honors. <laughs> Danielle A. Tran, Highest Honors. Delaney J. Williams. Associate in Science, Radiologic Technology, Haley J. Altenweg, Highest Honors. Kelly A. Barry, Honors. John T. Clark, Jr., High Honors. <laughs> Natalie Ann Diorio, Honors. <laughs> Julia Elana Rinwich. <laughs> Carissa Ann Mosca. Mackenzie Lynn Perrin, Honors. Certificate in Dental Laboratory Technology, Henry W. Heffernan. <laughs> Ali S. Nasiri. Alta <laughs> Najaliu. And Mary. <laughs> Certificate in Medical Assisting, Matthew D. Chase. <laughs> Elena de Jesus Ayala. <laughs> Christopher Masaki Lee. Ariana Zulmira Riviero. Certificate Medical Billing and Coding, Madeline De La Cruz. <laughs> Ashley Nieves. Last one. Certificate in Phlebotomy, Lauren Elizabeth Mansfield. Thank you so much, Dean Townsend. Round of applause for our health graduates. I now invite Interim Dean of STEM, Marie Toupe, to join me at the podium so that we can award the degrees for our STEM students. And we begin with the Associate in Science Biology Transfer, Nilab Amiri Honors. Stephen C. Lanick, Commonwealth Honors Scholar, Highest Honors. Maira Martinez de Napoles Pires. Christopher W. Slesowicz, Highest Honors. Associate in Science, Biotechnology Technician, Rachel M. Besonen. Danny Cheng, honors. <laughs> Sabrina de Almeida Paganotti, high honors. <laughs> Isabel Beatrice Dominguez. <laughs> Marisol Angelina Evans Garcia. Shirin Furutani.
Patricia Val Forrester, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Lian Sing Fu, highest honors. Vanessa Souza Heinen, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Vera Christina Kafkas, honors. Gerard Bulandresi Kalapasi, honors. Kashik Kumar Mukundal Kandoy, high honors. Limor Ken. Timothy John Lauderote, Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Linda. Linda E. Lossier, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Nada L. Lopez Figueroa, highest honors. Juliet Nakakandi Maganda, highest honors. Jesenia N. Mendoza, honors. Donna Mukanziza, high honors. Shaman Nalubega, honors. Liana Marie Nival, Commonwealth Honors Scholar, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, honors. Say H. Pa, honors. Isaiah Daniel Quinones, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Carlos Ramirez, highest honors. Alexandra M. Roig, member of Phi Theta Kappa, honors. Atkarsh Sukla, high honors. Arina Sor. Shane M. Spadafora. <laughs> Habigay A. St. John, M. Habigay A. A. St. John, MCC employee. <laughs> Peter Joseph Sylvain, high honors. Flori Quinesi Valsin. <laughs> Joseph S. Zagarella. <laughs> Associate in Science, Chemistry Transfer, Raymond A. Unganis, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Shane Edward Moore, MCC employee, honors. <laughs> Associate in Science, Computer Science Transfer, Soparan Tai, Computer Science Transfer. <laughs> Associate in Science, Computer Science Transfer, Secure Software Development, Jessica Lee Calabrese, high honors. Tatiana V. Soren Honors. Associate in Science, Engineering Science, Chemical Engineering Concentration, Nicholas E. Witch, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. 
Associate in Science, Engineering Science, Civil Environmental Engineering Concentration, Renan R.D. de Lima Gomes. Associate in Science, Engineering Science, Electrical and Computer Engineering Concentration, Nathan Thomas Crawford. Karim B. Cortes, High Honors. Robert M. Lombardi II. Kevin R. Surth. Caleb C. Summerton. Associate in Science, Engineering Science, Mechanical Engineering Concentration, Edwin Samuel Eisenberg, MCC Employee Honors. Adam Christopher Hayden, Honors. Sambat C. Kim. Ryan J. Prue, highest honors. <laughs> Laura Alexandra Rodriguez Melo, member of Phi Theta Kappa Honors. <laughs> Bryant A. Sanchez. Associate in Science, Engineering Technology, Computer Aided Design, Ryan John Berry, Engineering Technology, Computer Aided Design Award, highest honors. Sofal J. <laughs> Levi C. Kim. Jeffrey Douglas LeMessurier. We now move on to the Associate in Science Liberal Studies Information Technology Cybersecurity Transfer Awards awardees. Raiseth Roth, Ein, honors. Stephen R. Dasho, Information Technology Award, MCC employee, highest honors. Brendan George Ignainian, MCC employee, honors. <laughs> Joanna Garcia, MCC employee, high honors. <laughs> Michael G. Ippolito. Boykin Brian Oninejo, member of Phi Theta Kappa. Shrey Patel, honors. Mohamed Reda. Sokpanaf Tang, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Antoine Tavares, honors. We now move to the Associate in Science Mathematics Transfer, Pakratsmi Hay, Mathematics Award for Outstanding Student, MCC Employee, highest honor. Oh, that's it. Thank you so much, Interim Dean Toupay. Can we give a round of applause now to our STEM majors? I now invite Dean of Business, Legal Studies, and Public Services, Judy Hogan, to join me at the podium so that we can award the degrees for the students in those programs. And we begin with an Associate in Science, Business Administration, Fauzia Adiba, High Honors. 
Rashid Abubaka. Sally H. Albuset. Lens B. Augustine, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Joshua Stephen Bark. Pasei Tang, Commonwealth Honors Scholar. Maya Evelise Sid, honors. <laughs> Elizabeth Ann Daly. <laughs> Kayla Varina Davis, Commonwealth Honors Scholar, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, high honors. <laughs> Edgar J. Delacruz, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Matthew David Dunham, Outstanding Achievement in Entrepreneurship, Highest Honors. Daniel Scott Dykstra, Honors. Julie A. Figuccia, Honors. Felicia Ann Fitzgerald, Member Phi Theta Kappa, High Honors. Joao Victor F. Fonseca, 2022-2023 All Massachusetts Academic Team, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. <laughs> Maria Paula Getty Freyd, dual enrollment, high honors. <laughs> Bridget Fundi, MCC employee. Kaylee A. Gagney, highest honors. Mark N. Gaito. <laughs> Ashley Jane Geyer. <laughs> Raquel Gonzalez, highest honors. <laughs> Hannah R. Griffin, honors. Rhea A. Enriquez. Amber Hernandez. Lindsay Jean Hickey, honors. Alana Carol Hunt. Kevin Chiasuma Ilunga, Business Administration. Jamalette Javier. <laughs> Lili Cow, honors. <laughs> Nadia N. Kasausi. <laughs> Krishna C. K., high honors. <laughs> Shubhavev Karana, highest honors. <laughs> Joao Samuel Amy Tresor Kwame, MCC employee. <laughs> Rebecca K. Lanou, highest honors. <laughs> Alice C. Lugo, Hospitality Management Award honors. Philip R. Morano, MCC employee. Willow Dara Marino. Harrison C. Mayot, dual enrollment, honors. Samantha M. Meehan. Kira Minley Maha Martinez. High honors. Elma Michek, honors. <laughs> Katherine.
Catherine Summer Marrera, highest honors. Hajira Niazi, highest honors. Moltang Ni W. Bryan Van Lierup, English Language Learners Prize, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, high honors. Emua Mosa Obaseki, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Ada Jeanette Ortiz Garcia, honors. Drashti A. Patel. <laughs> Selena C. Fang, high honors. <laughs> Carlos Omar Pizarro, honors. <laughs> Allison D. Poole, Culinary Arts Program Award, MCC employee, highest honors. <laughs> Elizabeth H. Purdy, high honors. <laughs> Brunielt Salvant. No! Kieran T. Scofidio, Commonwealth Commitment, high honors. <laughs> Ellie Sorongo. <laughs> Sophia Sue Krause, honors. Sarah P. Sve. <laughs> Tiffany Joy Tabolt, honors. <laughs> Stephanie Marie Vachon, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. <laughs> Francis Vertuli. <laughs> Sherito Fair Mufada, high honors. Alexis Denise Young. We now go to Associate in Science, Fashion Merchandising, Mary Angelica Melocosta, Fashion Merchandising Award, highest honors. And now for the Associate in Science, Fire Protection and Safety Technology, Wilfredo Jimenez, Jr., honors. Now to our Associate in Science, Criminal Justice, Matthew R. Beauchene. <laughs> Caitlin Castellano. <laughs> Ashley Marie Grigg. <laughs> William Bakewell James, highest honors. Deepak V. Majumdar, Donald J. Malesi, Criminal Justice and Criminal and Social Justice Award for Academic Excellence, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. <laughs> Jacob Christian Marash. <laughs> Ana Esther Norberto Arrugueta. <laughs> Nisa. Lanya Rivera, Donald J. Malisi, Criminal and Social Justice Award for Academic Excellence, member Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. <laughs> Norieli Roques Rodriguez. <laughs> Eva Marie Servio. Jaden Scott Valkovich, member of Phi Theta Kappa, dual enrollment, highest honors. <laughs> Philip J. Sue. <laughs> and now we move to the Associate in Science and Liberal Studies, Aviation Maintenance Technology, Mark A. Dotson. Associate in Science in Liberal Studies, Paralegal Studies Career, Joseph Gustavo Cervantes. Honors. <laughs> Christina L. Fields. <laughs> Catherine.
Aaron J. Kane, Deborah Walsh Paralegal Award, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Becky Parento, highest honors. And now for the Associate in Science in Legal Studies, Paralegal Studies Transfer, Tan Lee M. Hawkins. Tan Lee Soon. Son. <laughs> Ashley M. Rona, member Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Certificate in Entrepreneurship, Serena A. Williams, MCC Employee Honors. And now for the Certificate, Hospitality Management, Culinary Arts, Priska Obey. Certificate in Paralegal Studies, Fernanda Tamorro Arias, member of Phi Theta Kappa High Honors. Rachel A. Jacobs. Susan McCroskey Lander. Last one. Molly Sykes Millett, High Honors. Thank you so much, Dean Hogan. Can we please give a round of applause to those who've earned their degrees in business, legal studies, and public services today. I now invite Interim Dean of K-16 Initiatives, Kimberly Gonzalez, to join me at the podium so we can award those degrees. And our first program is Associate in Science Early Childhood Education, Jacqueline Cutter Lee. Kanara Ng. <laughs> Jennifer Ortiz. <laughs> Angela B. Pardo, high honors, member of Phi Theta Kappa. Associate in Science, Early Childhood Education Transfer, Nicole D. Antonoff, high honors, member of Phi Theta Kappa. <laughs> Crystal Gilbert, honors. Lauren D. Javier Mercedes, high honors. Nicole Lynn Fletcher, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Adriana Vasquez, honors. Emily D. Vasquez, honors. And now for our Associate in Arts and Liberal Arts and Sciences Elementary Education Transfer Concentration, Kayla M. Chan. <laughs> Maiza Gordon, Commonwealth Honor Scholar, MCC Employee, Highest Honors. Certificate Early Childhood Education Assistant Teacher, Barbara Lou Munye. Mariella Perez. Thank you so much, Dean Gonzalez. Could we give a round for our education majors? I now invite Dean of Liberal Arts, Matthew Olson, to join me at the podium. And we're going to begin with the Associate in Arts, Liberal Arts and Sciences, Vivian Luisa Ayanmugisha. Honors. Maheen R. Bilal, member of Phi Theta Kappa, honors. Robert Brito. Dawadi Stephanie Chun Chun. 
Mira C. Como, honors. Mira. Marlene Florentino, MCC employee. Ana Maria Foss, member of Phi Theta Kappa. Claire E. Goodrich, Commonwealth Honors Scholar, highest honors. Liam Michael Goulet. Ariana Helen Green, highest honors. Josie E. Hagopian. Paige M. Hogue, MCC employee, honors. Ellie Hoon, Commonwealth Honors Scholar, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Jayanti Katri Tapa. Owen J. Linguas, highest honors. Lillian P. LeDuc, MCC employee. <laughs> you have a special one tonight. Annie O'Connor, Middlesex Community College, Board of Trustees. Jonathan P. Martin. Audrey, Audrey Marie Mendenhall, highest honors. Leah Jeanette Michaud, highest honors. Jonathan Mateo Ortiz, dual enrollment, high honors. Emily Rose Puccia. Ashley M. Richards. Rachel N. Wrigley. Vidali. Robles Molina honors. Haley E. Rourke. Stephen K. Sawyer Jr. Lakeisha Vieng. Claudia Sivati honors. The next degrees are Associates in Arts, Liberal Arts and Sciences, English and Creative Writing, Concentration. Alexandra Brooke Balver, Creative Writing Award for Outstanding Achievement, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Tariq Keyshawn Braithwaite, honors. Colby S. Scalpin. Our next degree is Associate in Arts, Liberal Arts and Sciences, English Literature, Concentration, Serena N. Gill. Gwyneth Morris. And now for our graduates in the Associate in Arts, Liberal Arts and Sciences, History, Politics and Global, Global Studies, Studies Concentration, Concentration, Carter B. Sims. Amanda Sarani Tech. Susan J. Woods. History, Politics, and Global Studies Award. Commonwealth Honor Scholar, Highest Honor. Our next degree is the Associate in Arts in Liberal Arts and Sciences, Psychology, Concentration. Alexis C. Alexander, member of Phi Theta Kappa, Highest Honor. <laughs> Abigail E. Coleman, Commonwealth Honors Scholar, member Phi Theta Kappa, dual enrollment, MCC employee, highest honors. Victoria Gabriela da Silva, high honors. Latavia J. DeAngelis, honors. Emma Marie Dazan, honors. Alexia Luisa Fina, honors. Daniel Joseph Hebert, honors. 
Jennifer Ann Hebert, dual enrollment. Ashley Ann Ede, honors. ID? <laughs> Krista J. LaDuc, honors. Luisa M. Lodonia San Clemente, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Alia Taylor Moreau, honors. Joseph W. Nickerson, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Yoralise Paulino. Kendra M. Rosa. Anna Rose Rudy, Psychology Award for Outstanding Achievement, Commonwealth Honors Scholar, member of Phi Theta Kappa, MCC employee, highest honors. Chris <laughs> <laughs> Melis Ruiz. Oh. <laughs> Samer Lee Daphne Sanchez. Nicole Salma, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Savannah Smith Petricone, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Alexandra Lynn West, honors. Our next degree is the Associate in Science Communication Career, Christina O. Longo. Now on to our Associate in Science Communication Transfer, Timothy E. Burns, highest honors. Samuel Castillo, high honors. Amber N. Delicandro, Communication Award for Outstanding Student Transfer, highest honors. Paul Catende. High honors. Calvin Fuchu. Our next degree is the Associate in Science and Human Services, James E. Austin, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. You know. That's right. <laughs> Philip Cadwallader, honors. Ruth Joseph Good, honors. Francinidi. Francinidi de Coromas. Christina Marie O'Halloran, highest honors. And now for Associate in Science and Liberal Studies, Robert A. Aloisi III. Harriet Kierda Ansa. Yeah. Catherine M. Arcerio. Yeah. Adriana Y. Ocella. Yeah. Shiva C. Carduz. Yeah. Olivia M. Salona. Met Medical Assisting Award for Academic Excellence. Okay. <laughs> Brittany L. Costa. Leilani Cuevas. Rhiannon V. Downer, Liberal Arts. Brianna Bridget Urisi. Stephanie Garrido. Kadiga Hussein Hassan. High honors. Leia Nijambi Kahari. Eunice Ben Kajanga. Maria Monica Caraballo. Okay. 
Ravi Salina Kong. Dimitrik D. Lofton, member of Phi Theta Kappa, highest honors. Veronica K. Long. Stephanie L. McNulty. Marlene Medina. Christian M. Molina, MCC employee. Bausia Najuma, highest honors. Becky Nguyen. Judith E. O'Connor. Yes, Merlin Otega, Medical Assisting Award for Clinical Excellence and Liberal Studies. Kayla Navifon Autama. Bobby Pon. Basida Ashraf Putiapuril. Faraday Sanders. Yannick E. Sauri. Mavinti Sesaje Juana. Riti Su Un. Rosemary Toon. Marjorie D. Vasquez, honors. Joseph Anthony Voto, MCC employee, honors. Our next degree is the Associates in Science and Liberal Studies Graphic Design. Kayla Joanne Bellavo, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Kaylin A. Campbell, MCC employee, high honors. Karen Ann Fields. Diana Hernandez, honors. Matthew James Leonhardt. Stephanie Morazzo, highest honors. Joshua B. McNamara, honors. Joseph C. Peterson, honors. Caitlin Pichette, member of Phi Theta Kappa, high honors. Nirio Amner Pizarro, honors. Jessica M. Sar Saracas, MCC employee, highest honors. Brian, Brian Anita Carr, N. Var. Our next degree is the Associates in Science and Liberal Studies Performing Arts Option, a uh, Performing Arts Music Option. James H. U. Music Award for Outstanding Performance. Our last one for the whole okay. And our last degree awarded this morning is the Associate in Science and Liberal Arts Studio Arts, Nicole C. McLaughlin. Class of 2023, before I can formally present you as graduates to Professor, for President Sisson for the official blessing, you need to do one last thing. Take your tassel and move it to the left. <laughs> Moving your tassel is a symbol of you crossing over to the role of a graduate. President Sisson, I have the honor and privilege of presenting to you the Middlesex Community College, Class of 2023.
So let's make this official. So let's make this official. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as directed by the Board of Trustees and Department of Higher Education, I do hereby confer upon you the degree of Associate in Arts and Associate in Science and Certificate with all the rights and privileges thereinto pertaining. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Class of 2023. Folks, before we leave here today, we have a very special closing song provided by the cast of our recent production of Rent, led by our theater chair, Professor Karen Oster. We'll bring you Rent.
Thank you so much, Karen, all of you. To conclude our ceremony, I ask everyone to stand as the platform guests, faculty, staff, and graduates exit the auditorium. Everyone, please feel free to gather out front to take photos with your graduates, and please also join us across the street in the Cowan Center for a luncheon reception. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Yeah.